mic'd up. Good morning, good morning. It's that magical time of the year once again. Autumn is in full swing here in the eastern United States. This morning we are in Babcock State Park, West Virginia. This state park is home to the most photographed location in the entire state. That is Glade Creek Gristmill, right down the hill down there. And I may have just missed peak colors by a little bit, but I'm still very, very happy with the images I was able to get this morning. Taking a little bit of a breather, a little bit of a hike. I'm here with these cool rock formations up here that have all these awesome like textures and layers and lots of cool photo opportunities with these. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you a few tips and tricks on how to make your fall photos stand out, what to do, what not to do, best times, weather conditions, et cetera, et cetera. Let's start with the first question. Is there a best time of year and place to capture fall photos? Of course, yes to both of those answers. I'm gonna be mainly talking about the United States because that's what I have the most experience with, especially the Eastern United States. We're talking about the Appalachian Mountains, Blue Ridge Parkway, Smoky Mountains. So obviously, the further north you go, the earlier in the year the fall colors will begin to peak. You're talking the New England area, we're saying September. And then if you go all the way down to Florida and Georgia, you're talking uh, mid to late November sometimes even when those cypress trees down there can peak, but they look gorgeous when they do. But if you're in the middle of the state, kind of like we are now, West Virginia, North Carolina, Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain area, it's generally going to be around October to late October. Now the thing that makes fall photography kind of like maddening in a certain way, but also why a lot of people love doing it because you kind of like chase it, is you never know exactly when and where it's going to be peak. It's kind of like a guessing game. It's kind of like you're playing the lottery, honestly. Like you really just don't know when the peak colors are going to be the best. You kind of kind of cross your fingers and hope. You can check all the fall prediction color chart maps out there that you really want to, uh, but those are only as accurate as the data that is put into them. And you guys know how it goes. You know, if there's just a little bit of a breezy day um, at the right time, or if the nights start getting colder all of a sudden, like peak colors can only be a day sometimes, even a matter of a few hours, depending on where you're at before the wind knocks them all down. Like it is crazy. But what I found is a great method. Yes, you can check the fall prediction maps. Um, those are kind of like a good baseline, I would say. But then after that, I would recommend checking out Google maps, especially Google Photos. So like go to wherever you're kind of thinking of going, for instance here at Backpack State Park, and then go over to the images section. There you'll be able to see up-to-date images of exactly what it's looking like that people more than likely just snapped on their cell phone and uploaded the same day. So that's actually a really, really accurate way to kind of judge how the colors are turning in that exact area at that exact time. I actually like that method better than just relying on the fall color maps because those are generally made at the beginning of the season and they may not hold true um, a month down the line when the colors are actually really starting to change. So I would always recommend checking Google Maps, Google Photos, and just kind of look at other things that people have been posting to kind of get the best gauge on the fall colors. And as far as weather conditions, um, it's really up to personal preference. If you're looking for the best colors, I would really recommend getting something like a polarizer right here. A polarizer filter really is gonna make those colors pop and look for kind of overcast uh, conditions, maybe even a little bit of rain as well. Um, that will really cut down on the sunlight hitting the leaves, but which can look cool by the way. If you have a backlit shot um, with the sun kind of lighting them all up, that can look cool as well. It's all up to personal preference again, but if you're looking for a maximum color with as little um, effect from the sun as possible. Go for those overcast days. It's really gonna make those reds, those yellows, those orange pop out and make them look even more vibrant. And it just kind of gives that spooky kind of feel that is uh, really, really nice around this time of the year. Next up, I can't stress this enough. Come early, come early. I'll show you some B-roll here of Babcock State Park here. I mean, I was here at about six in the morning uh, right when the park opened and there was still lots and lots of people here which is really really fun it's a great way to connect with other photographers in the community share some funny stories um, just get some ideas from them as well but uh, if you're a photographer that likes some solitude and some peace and quiet um, definitely come early especially if you're going to a very popular place uh, such as this one and lastly yeah just enjoy your time out here fall is a very very short season for many of us here on the east coast it is just gone in the blink of an eye it seems sometimes just take a little bit of time soak it all in enjoy the colors the smells just the beauty of nature around this time of the year it's really really spectacular here i'm gonna try and get out of the sun the best i can here <laughs> and that's gonna be pretty much it for this video i'm gonna show you guys some photos now that i took here at babcock state park i tried a few different things i tried a 35 millimeter lens which I'm actually filming this on right now and I did a I think like a five picture panorama going long ways so I'm going to show you that right now.
and of course I wanted to get the iconic waterfall shot. There were a lot of other photographers down there but they were all super super nice and just very accommodating. Had, had some good talks, had some good laughs down there for sure. Um, and that iconic shot is going to be right here. I used I think about a two minute exposure for this one. I had a six stop ND filter on there as well shooting at about f13 and you can still see it's a little bit underexposed but in the edit I was able to bring up the exposure a bit and really make those colors pop. Of course, yes, when you're talking West Virginia, you're talking Glade Creek Grist Mill. This is like seriously the most iconic location here. It just screams rural Appalachia. There are a few other nice places nearby. Um, you got Diamond Point at uh, New River Gorge State Park, National Park, excuse me, National Park. It's one of the newer national parks out there. Um, I've been there a couple times. That one's a really, really nice area. Yeah, I would say fall is probably my favorite time of the year to visit uh, good old West Virginia. I drive through it so many times, but I just don't feel like I stop here enough and give it its due respects for how beautiful of a place it actually is. So that's it for this video. Let me know what fall photography locations are your favorite in the country or in the world. Are there some hidden gems out there that you would like to tell, maybe? I'm all ears. And before we know it, uh, winter and Christmas is going to be here. So no more fall photography. So get out there and enjoy it while you still can. And that's going to be it for me, guys. Have a great rest of your day. See you later.